what I've noticed is on my XFK and on my PEG and on my Tabor, the more memory I have installed, the slower everything is in unit because it's a sort of refresh condition. Is it true? Back to yep. two, if you go back to two gig cards? If I go down to 5, 12 megabytes or a gig, blazing baby. Yeah. Okay. And two gigs is okay. Did two you, gigs. Did, did you just volunteer? Hey, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you know the secret sauce. Maybe there, there might be a flag somewhere to say, okay, and you would run it as 512K. Yeah. And I still then when we go to the OS, use two gigs. I still think the memory control is going to pull some of the yeah. 5,000 are wrong, by the way. Maybe that's the thing that's slowing it down. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. It's correct, though. If you go to two gigs, <laughs> yeah. it's really fast. On a table or an X5000, it's going to yeah. whoosh. Yeah, whoosh. But you put yeah. more than two gig in, then it, maybe it's checking the memory. <laughs> Now, there's refresh. Something, there's, there's something, yeah, it has to do with the, the actual refresh rate of the, the screen. There's, something, there's some sort of buffer management thing that's going on this time. Yeah. Well, firmware, you know, it's just a big busy loop, so. <laughs> it's probably heating cycle somewhere. There's something, there's something yeah. going on. Yeah, I'm, something sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure we'll be able to find it. Because firmware is very, very primitive, right? Very. No firmware. Yeah. yeah. Well, our firmware. Yeah, our firmware. Yeah. yeah, it would be nice if it did. Proper job of detecting drives and partitions and removing from and consistent on that. It's Wouldn't that be nice? It's just you know how many times I've been confused by that? Oh, you literally, I just oh, unplugged oh, the oh, other drive. There's no yeah. other way to know for sure that you actually have to know. And then uh, that one year Alex Carmona was here and he said, oh yeah, if you put this line in kick layout, you can redirect it over here as well. I, I'm like, now I don't know anything. God, Where I'm, am I booting from? I don't know. <laughs> you probably know because I, I asked. It's like, how do you control where the thing's going to move from reliably? Reliable. Oh, you just need to install multi boot and do the roll and install and the kick layout. And you're like, where? How? Somebody show me where these are. Oh, no, no, it's all in there. Don't worry, you'll find it. It's tough. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. <laughs> it's but several uh, ways of doing it. But, uh, yeah. One is more complicated than the other. Okay. Yes. Uh, I think if you have a large USB drive on there too, it makes a difference. Or SSD, you mean? You. You just don't drive. Oh, oh, okay. Boot off a USB. No, no. Just, just have just to be there. It takes more time to see. It, it goes and looks like okay. it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, scanning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's firmware. The X1000 scans twice. Yeah, that's an odd one, isn't it? Yeah, I haven't asked uh, Mark what that means. Wilson, right? Do it twice. <laughs> yeah, didn't ask. <laughs> yeah, firmware's a, it's a, it's a, bit, a bit of a bear to work with, too, because if you make a mistake, crash, right? So, <laughs> you don't get much debug output. <laughs> It's not fun to work with, like a, like an OS. An OS is much easier to work with. So uh, you need a certain type of person that likes that kind of work. Do you really want to go for an incident on? You don't want to allow a little room to, to see to see what's going on as the machine sets up? Well, no. If I was Matthew, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like. No time. I, a lot of people not, try to right? convince me to change my. He's trying to make a complete computer, and then you talk to people who like to fiddle. Mm -hmm. I go. Well, no, you want to fiddle, right? So we got to, do we add something in there? <coughs> fiddle, hey, well, monkey this, monkey that. Well, even <laughs> after we've got the, the newer reboot thing where we can, we can lower the revolutions yeah. and, the, and the animation and stuff, I always left it going long because I want to see what's going on. Yeah, yeah, see, and when I'm developing, I want to see what's going on. But when I want, just want to boot it, so you kind of want two modes almost, right? Developer mode and user mode, you know, something like that. Yeah. Where you just 
move fast and don't, don't give them any options, and the other mode is let them do anything they like. <laughs> but that's almost all of us. <laughs> Sometimes I'm not in the mood to watch the thing spin. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not the, just the spin, but the next the stuff that kicks in. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sometimes I, I, I just want it to go fast. I still like to watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, media people are special. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> There's my quote for the day. That's the quote. I, I like the biggest people are special. <laughs> Very special. Very here, cool. here we have little yellow buses for us. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of candy. Oh, any um, questions on, on the partitioning of? Uh... Yeah, just one. Okay. Um, with regards to you know, it's into the um, official repositories, both for beta testers as well as for prevention, I'm sure the parent will. Possibly turn on the update server again, but whenever that happens, what's the um, is there a contractual obligation for Hyperion to accept an updated kernel from the XSG team, or can they refuse it for specified or unspecified reasons? Oh, huh. I I could uh, I, I would say they can refuse it, of course, because uh, it's their right to refuse bad software, right? <laughs> And vice versa. Understood. So, <laughs> are the reasons are the reasons specified, or can they can refuse it for any reason? Ah, uh, I don't remember seeing anything about specifics. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it can be a uh, it can be a political minefield. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, it can be. It can be. But at the same time, it's like we're one team. So if you want to be bitchy, you can be bitchy, but you're not helping sell the product. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing that should be recognized, of course, is you pretty, pretty succinctly that, you know, XXG needs Amiga OS. Yeah, we need each other. Yeah. Yeah. But the other thing, of course, is Hyperion do not have an exclusive on XXG. Yeah. Not that we're going elsewhere, because we're Amiga OS. We're Amiga, Amiga OS company, so. Mm -hmm. As a group, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, the kernel is a little special in that uh, it can't live without a kernel. <laughs> but other components like uh, the kernel can't live without the rest. Well, <laughs> take Aros, throw it on top. <laughs> so, but you know, there's um, there's uh, uh, interesting parts of the OS that aren't part of the OS, like the TCP AP stack, the USB stack. Whoa, wait a minute, why isn't it part of the OS now? It's licensed. It's all licensed, right? So, so Rapid wrote another license individually. Everything's, ownership, there's ownership and licensing, so, no. right? So, you know, it, it's, it, uh, Are we gonna go, uh, is the whole process of this, to form a new so that we have essentially an operating system that is complete, and so when people buy it, they just have everything? Yes, yes, so that's what Commodore used to do. Right? They, um, well, all, I mean, that's what Apple does. Is like, like, you know, when we, you buy an HP or they bought pieces from all sorts of people, threw it on the floppies. But when the user buys it, when you user. bought it, you bought the licenses to everything on board, yeah. all at once. You, you turn it on, it's yours. A Rex, for yeah. instance. Yeah, A Rex, that was not theirs. Uh, the speaking speech device, okay. that's not theirs. But it is the users, because when they bought it, they. Well, the user buys a license. Yeah. They never buy the. Yeah, you buy a book, you don't own the text, you just bought the paper. Yeah. It coincidentally has the letters in it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> coincidentally. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, as a user, you just buy the license. But what the user wants, I think, is just, I don't care about all this stuff. Right. Don't care. Mm -hmm. Just give me the complete product. I want everything on there, and I want the graphics driver, too. <laughs> you know, everything, not. I have to go download this and download that. And, you know, that's just corporate shenanigans. <laughs> Don't want anything to do with it, right? As the, the way Jack ran things is everything was on there, right? There's no BS about I have to go buy enhancer from this company, I have to go buy audio driver from that company, I have to go buy Ethernet driver from that company. None of that. <laughs> well, some of the licenses, 
they're licensed for one machine. Some of them are licensed for any machine I use. No? If it's the OS, you can be OS with every machine you use anyway. Yeah, but legally and illegally, yeah, you do. Huh? I'm confused, though. Well, okay, I've got a machine in my computer room. I've got a machine out my uh, uh, study. And uh, I've got the same software on both of them. But you know, uh, on some of the software I can't use in my uh, computer room because it's not licensed. It's only licensed for one machine. Yeah. Right. You're talking about third party software, yeah. not OS. Not OS. Yeah. The OS. That's, that's, that's uh, uh, unfortunately normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, yes. has a tool, doesn't it? Hmm? I mean, you know, OS has that tool. You have to buy a copy for each. Yes. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's per machine. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. lost the process of you, when you bought Deluxe Paint back in the day, you bought one and you could buy it without copy protection, you could buy it with copy protection. But you, when you went home, we didn't have multiple machines, we had the 1000. Yeah, because they're expensive. <laughs> <laughs> but later on, when people started buying multiple machines, they, when people bought 3.1, they never looked back. They bought ROMs, but they didn't buy 3.1 over and over again for each machine. No, the the, the proper people did. <laughs> well, I mean, back in those days, you had to buy the ROM. To get the ROM, you bought the OS. Yeah. Now, you could buy, if you have five 5,000s, you could buy one of 5,000 OS disks and install it. Or you could buy the ROMs and then you buy a workbench separate. Yeah, you've been able to buy a workbench separate for a long time. Yeah. Depends on the OS. I know, but it depends on the versions. And yeah. I'm trying to think of me. Was it three? You could have three, three one and three five and three nine were the only ones that didn't come with a ROM. Three one. Right, yeah, three one, three, one, three, three five, <coughs> three nine. Yeah, you didn't need ROMs. Three, two, one, three, one, two, all came with ROMs. In fact, the, the change was right. in the ROM. Yeah. The, exactly. the main change was really yeah. in the ROM. For example, the one point three was auto boot and that was the whole idea that it, right. the, it let you auto yeah. boot. So they were always you always had to buy a copy of the OS. There version. was uh, yeah, you always did. two one. So that came as a flop we were But we don't you know, know we no longer buy camera. our copy. That's we we, that we buy a machine. Now. When we buy an yeah. Aeon or a doctor, then we just get the OS. Yeah. We don't need to have a third party. No, okay. That's right. That's right. But there's all sorts of schemes though. If I buy a board, <laughs> I may not get everything. Sell things separately than if it's not an all in one. Well, the, the user's going to buy a computer. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's uh, well, you the, the, uh, there's lots of people that said, why do I have to buy a, a 4.1 license when I buy an X5000? I don't want the 4.1 license. Right? The, like those people want it separated. Because <laughs> they don't want to pay for it. Yeah. Yeah, some of the European and some of the Morph guys talk about that. Yeah. And didn't some, the guys in Italy make some kind of deal where they you, they sold it to you and then they returned yeah, it? Yeah, that was not very well received. <laughs> not well received. <laughs> I, I don't. Is is did they think that there is some is there some like consumer rule that allows you to decide which thing you want with your hardware in Europe? Well, to put this way, um, if, if the agreement with Hyperion is that they're giving you a license, you know, a company a license to supply uh, Amiga OS, you know, with the with the hardware and call it Amiga One, then you you have to bundle it with the hardware. That's the deal. And it makes sense. Mm -hmm. and they, how do you, the, the how only, how the, the well, guys well, they, they let's say it wasn't well received. Uh, the the best way to do it is to say okay we we don't want the we actually don't want the license here's a mouse pad. I yeah. mean it costs a lot more than mouse pad, but here's a mouse pad. You know that's the and that's what they that's what they should have done really. It would have been much in, easier. In the end, you just if you buy a computer, you want everything to be there. <laughs> and that's my thing. My, when my friends say, Michael, what machine do you want, yeah. would you recommend? I say, well, I I love this machine, and they go. Where can I get it? I mean, that's my first problem. You know, I have to find a place I can get it. And yeah. the second problem is explain it. Should be simple. 
right? Yeah. yeah well, so if you buy it from Aon, for example, then you get everything because it's supplied. Yeah. All you, in you, you can choose not to have it. <laughs> but you can choose not to have it, which yeah. confuses everything. Yeah. Well, but it comes as standard. If you choose not to have it, then it's back yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's an interesting scenario. But really, it, it should be tuned to the customers. Ultimately. Yeah. And it looks like you're leaning that way. Yeah. You're only just starting. Yeah. That's right. So what's next? Jeez. <laughs> Hardware. Oh, I should stop right there. No, what's next is coming out. Oh, oh I, any more uh, questions, LD? Are you, uh, sorry, LD, any more questions? No, sir. You're good? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So hardware. So what, what hardware does the Click SG run on? So I tried to make an uh, all-inclusive list. That's what I tried to do. So, <laughs> so there's quite a few variants that I discovered. Right? There's a lot of SAM 460s. There's three of them. <coughs> Bone. <laughs> uh, there's two 440s. There's a micro of a 15. So those are our our, um, our targets. You got the SE. No. no, I did not. <laughs> it was never supported. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it got tacked on again. Oh, okay. So I'm, I'm saying except SG, no, we don't support the SE. Today, today, we'll talk about it. <laughs> I don't have one to test with. It does work, by the way. Well, that's nice. Yeah, not supported. Uh, yeah. I've never asked, but it, I make it work. It so if someone work. says, it doesn't work, too bad. That's yeah. what you get for answers. And I know. Mine but works. If you run any of these, you will not get a too bad answer. <laughs> okay, we'll try to fix it. Yeah. Isn't that just most of the time when it's completely working? Working very nicely. Oh, yeah. I know. That was my yeah. first. There's a lot of hardware. So when I look at this list, I think, I don't want this lift. <laughs> I want to chop it up here. <laughs> but I know users would be upset. <laughs> and it knocks off your machine. Yeah. It, it would knock yeah. off your machine. Hey, Apple does it every day. <laughs> That's why there's a the early problem. But the, see, as a, as a programmer, software guy, I don't want complexity. This is too complicated. Sure. I mean, just for completeness, it should be a Mega One 500, which is actually. Well, that's that's. I this. know it's a Sam 460, but it, so that's this one. Oh, that's there, is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have one over there actually. <laughs> this is the same guy, but they they rebadged it, so I didn't know. So I didn't want to put the badges. <laughs> so do I call it this or do I call you it? You probably should put call a slash. It. You probably call it, yeah, because it is actually. This is should be one five hundred. Yeah. yeah. As well. That was a, that is, was, was a product. I don't think they made this. The modern suitcase. Yeah. The suitcase. The one you left. Right here. Yeah. Suitcase. <laughs> nice machine. Yeah. 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 That's a, it's a very expensive case. <laughs> <laughs> the shipping was more than the case. <laughs> oh, never forget UPS. <laughs> so, but yeah, when I look at this list, I get I get uh, nervous because that's a lot of platforms, right? And uh, we don't have an automated test, so if I want to test to see if something works, you have to load <laughs> each machine. Every machine needs to be tested. <laughs> oh, that's fun. It, now you understand. Yeah. <laughs> If you had an automated test, you'd have to. You still have to have the physical machines. <laughs> physical yeah. machines. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and load it up on every one and run your test and make sure. So that's how you um, are supposed to develop software. <laughs> so people take different shortcuts to, or risks, if you want to call it risks, to try and speed things up. So they'll say, okay, anything older than SAM 440, we just won't test it. We'll pretend it works until someone complains. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you'll do stuff like that and take shortcuts. Yeah, 
you can't get those anyway unless you buy it usually at the depredator point you know you yeah can't. but then you always get somebody who drives who found found something at an estate sale and <laughs> okay I fired this up hey it doesn't work you gotta fix it <laughs> Four of those, two of them still alive. So I'll be sure to let you know. Yeah, <laughs> I, you know what? One of my ideas, actually, was to kill these guys here. Mm. These two, right? But, but I know emulation is really hot, mm. right? So I'll take these out and make it into a virtual hardware target. Pretend a machine that never existed, mm -hmm. that has two gigs of RAM, tons of Zorro space, right? Call that uh, the V Amiga <laughs> One Two Thousand or something, right? The virtual Amiga One, V Amiga One, right? And uh, that will be a great product to have for the emulation market, right? Ditch the real plastic hardware because it's just dead anyways. <laughs> I mean, it's limping, but it, it's it's only a products like Vampire and stuff are out there now. Nobody cares anymore. Um, <laughs> Not that many Cyberstorms right. around anymore. It's over. Cyberstorm blizzards are over. So I'm thinking, no, no, don't, don't throw that work away. No, no, it's still good code. Let's morph it into a virtual target that you can still run. Ghosts. Oh, it's my uh, my suitcase. Oh man, it wants out, doesn't it? Yeah, the badger's trying to get out. <laughs> <laughs> and I hate when that happens. Oh. <laughs> well, anyway, that was one of my ideas. Yeah, right? if you do that, chances are it will still run on the original hardware. Well, no, I, I would kill that part. Oh. Yeah, I don't want anyone with original hardware bothering me ever again. Right. <laughs> That's the goal. But I also don't want emulator guys to be out of luck. Because a lot of people run it on their classic emulation environment. Like Nils here, <laughs> who has it running on emulation 4.1. I only started uh, doing that because I was coming here. I didn't want to lock uh, a real Amiga. Didn't want to lock a real Amiga. See? So there you go. So it's going to run on apps. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, but, remove the restrictions. Good. Because remember, it, it only does, what is it, so many megs of RAM? Yeah, it, it, it started at 128, and then the classic How many megs of RAM does it recognize? At the moment, uh, the max I could make it run is 640. 640 megs. You can get up to about it, one gig, almost. Like, See, yeah. well, why don't we just make it four gigs? Yeah. It's a Gigs. virtual target now. <laughs> Four gigs there's our max is so four now. Right? Gigs Fix. In this <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Because yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 if you forget about real hardware, <laughs> but you keep all the old stuff there so that the software's happy and everything still runs. Since my children is a box this high, North as Hill, I'm sure there's one more person that will run. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, that was one of my ideas, right? To get this list <coughs> reduced a little bit. <laughs> I don't know what to do with these guys. <laughs> uh, this no, one. <laughs> serial buffer. Oh, that's your serial yeah. terminal. Yeah. I'll buy you a terminal. Try okay. It. There you go. <laughs> okay, as long as it runs, it ain't go out, son. So, you know. It, and, and we have uh, we have these guys to support properly, right? We have these four guys here. They're, they're still not finished. They're still in all pre-release, aren't they? <coughs> all these. Well, this isn't even pre-release yet. Isn't this still pre-release? No, that makes one thousand. Yeah. Isn't it? Like you got a, a four two one. I don't think so. That. You're supposed to have four two on there. Yeah. That's all this way. <laughs> No, it's not that. <laughs> oh, it's real soon now. Don't oh, remind yeah. us. Two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't heard from uh, my period what the decision is on that. Yeah. I guess there's a t-shirt that comes with it. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Or a t-shirt. 
<laughs> or, wait a minute, or a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> hurt now? <laughs> uh, yeah, and then there's of course all the combination of cards and things that go with every platform. So, um, the beta testing team is a uh, kind of a random collection of people who own all these bits, right? And our the idea is that you give them an ISO image, they run it on whatever they're running, and they report back what works, what doesn't work. That's how it's supposed to work. Once you ran into things where people weren't getting stuff, people weren't able to share and yeah. communicate, so a lot of it just fell. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So it's a it disarray right now, right at the moment. <laughs> anyway, I can guarantee the Executive SG stuff will be good. That's because you're working. Guarantee. Yes. I like that word. Personal guarantee. <laughs> We know where you live, remember? Uh oh. <laughs> what are you talking about? Just eating cash. Steve, at some point, are we going to learn more about the uh, the logging changes and the new log object that uh, yeah. Thomas included? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Um, roadmap. So I'm trying to build a what? Let's call it a roadmap. So what I've done is just took some high level stuff, if you will, and mentioned a few things that uh, working on at the moment. So A1222 load time emulation. So um, for those who don't know, A1222 doesn't have an FPU. So all our software expects an FPU. So what we've done is a couple of tricks. Uh, first, emulate the FPU right when there's an exception. And the second thing is replace all the FPU instructions at load time with equivalents in using the uh, SPE, which stands for what? I can't remember. SPE. No. Where is SPE? What's SP stand for? Special Programming Emulator? Engine. Engine. Some sort of engine. Some yeah. Engine. Engine. He's for engine. Um, Flow Processing Engine. No. <laughs> That's not nice. nice. Comes a critic. Uh, <laughs> um, of course, better logging system, which is something LD kind of referred to, because uh, our current system is print up to a buffer. We need a little better multi core support, of course, and high priority bug fixes. Not necessarily in any order. <laughs> and uh, my roadmap is a work in progress because we need to beat Trevor Aiden Thomas to figure out what we're going to do next. Which takes me to the product backlog. So, I like this uh, from Scrum. Scrum is a software development process, more or less. Uh, Guideline. Is it, is it something separate from Agile? Or? It's an agile methodology. Yeah. Okay. It's another one. Okay. Oh, I don't know if it buzz. It's very old now. Um, <laughs> it's um, it's finally gaining some traction in companies. Yeah, I noticed. Um, I like. I really like the concept of the product backlog. That's the part that really I think we need to do with Amigo OS in general. Right, not just the exec SG, but I focus on exec SGs. So I, I, I borrowed this text from scrub.org, modified a little bit. And um, basically, what we need to do is have an ordered list of everything that is known to be needed in the product. So all the features, all the fixes, everything. That's tricky to build. And there's lots and lots and lots of tools on the internet to help you build these. Lots of tools. <laughs> Even Microsoft Visual Studio has it built in. You can just start making a product backlog in Visual Studio right now. TFS, or it's changing to Azure. Azure, Azure, how do you pronounce that? Azure. Azure? 
I don't know. Right? Yeah. TFS, that's what we called it. <laughs> the team foundation server. <laughs> so you build a list with everything you could possibly need. Right? Tough, but doable. Then you say, okay, it's also the single source of requirements. So if it's not on the list, it ain't gonna ever happen. Bugs ever. Out. Bugs out. Right? So well, Steve, my Facebook too. post doesn't count? Hmm? My Facebook post doesn't count? Yeah, your Facebook post? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if it's not in the backlog, it never will happen. Ever. So that's a very important concept because people get confused. They say, well, I don't know. I put this on a mailing list in 1743 <laughs> and I reported that and I don't know why I haven't done it. <laughs> and as Tony said, I'll get right to it. Yeah. Get right to it. So it, it brings everybody, everyone knows this is the only place that matters, right? So that, that's an important concept, especially in, in large companies. Or in our situation, you know, you have a diverse set of users. They think, well, I posted this on some website, and it should have been done. <laughs> now the product owner, this is interesting. That's that man over there. <laughs> product owner is responsible for the backlog. Well, I haven't even heard of the backlog. What's a backlog? That means the content and the ordering. So you have your so the idea is the product owner is responsible. Doesn't mean they do it. <laughs> they oh, delegate. <laughs> delegate. Right? <laughs> but if something doesn't get done, it's his fault. Or <laughs> he puts it in the wrong order. Wrong order, yeah, what's wrong? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, he picks the order. No one else. <laughs> so that's how it works with Scrum. It's a very interesting way of doing it. So the, usually the product owner is um, the customer. So the customer is you, users, right? Well, there's too many of you. So you have to somehow make your voice heard via Trevor to get on the back. Right? <laughs> so, uh, I already kind of um, poked both Aeon and Hyperion in, in um, kind of like as your representative, sir. <laughs> said, okay, what do you want done? Right? And um, I, uh, uh, I got a list of bug fix, bug numbers from, uh, from Timothy. List of bug numbers. I want all these fixed. And nothing for Matthew yet. <laughs> I will bug him again and say, okay, what do you want? Right? Just tell us what you want. And uh, I'll ask uh, dealers too. Maybe I'll ask Aaron, be on the lake. Say, what do you want in Exec SG? Tell me. Anything. Now's your chance, right? Usually people just freeze up. <laughs> but that's how you gotta work. You gotta work this scrum idea. You gotta you gotta pull it out of the people, right? And uh, I was also planning to go on the web forums and say, okay, what do you want in Exec SG? And, and of course, get, get attacked immediately <laughs> by non Amigo S people. <laughs> You're an idiot. Oh, okay. Was that what you wanted? <laughs> and uh, that, that's what you got to do, though. You have to get the comb out there and you have to build this list. And you have to maintain the list. So it is never complete, is another weird quirk of the product app. It's never done, because the list rarely ever shrinks. It usually grows forever, which is kind of a strange concept for most people. <laughs> because you know when you use any piece of software, there's always something. Maybe a label, a color, a feature, uh, your competition adds a feature. Oh, I want that now, right? Never stops. Hardware breaks, you want new hardware. Oh, I want to support that platform, right? Put it on the backlog. <laughs> so that's what they, they mean by it's never complete, because you're always changing to the customer. It's customer driven. Uh, it evolves, yeah, as, uh, as I was trying to say, as the environment evolves, because our environment changes, as we know, right? We have tablets now. 
never existed before, right? So uh, things happen. Uh, it's dynamic, constantly changes. What the product needs to be appropriate, competitive, and useful. So this is their definition. So what what is it that makes the product appropriate, competitive, and useful? That's what we're shooting for. So we're trying to find all those things that you want because there's so many features, right? It's just incredibly difficult to pick what to do first. So the Scrum idea is to try to make one person who owns it at a time, who can delegate to other people and keep this backlog massaged and up to date, and is we'll pick off the priority one item, do that first. Whatever's at the top is done first, then two, then three, then four. And in Scrum, actually, you, you have these things called uh, time box releases, where you spend usually two weeks trying to do the item at the top. You got two weeks to do it. That's it. And if you can't get it done? Can't get it done? Oh, well, you gotta go back to the backlog reshuffle. Okay. If you can't, then you haven't cut it down into the the right size pieces. That implies that it's too big, yeah? Or you have the wrong people, or the wrong tech. Something went wrong, a bug, hardware failure, whatever it was, right? And so you go in there and you do it again, do it again, do it again, and you never stop until the product finally is discontinued. <laughs> That's it. So the Scrum methodology is an interesting one, and uh, I think it's appropriate for this particular project. Very appropriate, because we have oh, thousands of things we could do. What is the thing we should do, right? And that's what we gotta figure out. And we have to maintain that list and know who owns it. And then you <coughs> want something, or dealers, or whoever, new manufacturers come along, new boards, rejig the list, rejig the list, right? And everyone knows the list, everyone sees the list. We know what's coming next. We know we're developing at all times. So that, that was my idea, to borrow from Scrum. And I've seen it work. That's not going to be public, is it? Hmm? That's not going to be public, sure. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. If it was me, it would be public. But <laughs> I don't <laughs> I know there's a lot of sensitivities, but maybe well, not. Part of making it public, of course, uh, releases the animal instinct to say, why isn't it done yet? Because they see the list and they go, that should be done. Well, yeah, that's why you need kind of a rhythm too, right? You need to pick off the number one and you so, got to ship it. You can't just <laughs> half do it and drop it. You have to finish it. But even if you have stuff that's been finished, mm -hmm. if you don't ship it, then you well, got a hiatus that moves into yeah. What, 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 why Scrum it if you're, if you're not going to ever release it? Yeah, so generally Scrum teams will work like that for for a couple of months and then they'll release something to general public use. Well, I thought that's what we, what yeah. we were doing. I mean, I, well, I, that's what we should do. I saw a lot of things built and mm -hmm. put into yeah. the repository and they just sit there. Yeah, yeah well, that, that's a problem for a Hyperion to solve and I'll try to help, but yeah. That's so part of project money. Yeah, yeah. But I just wanted a, 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 a way of organizing all these features because there's so many. It's just ridiculous. That we, and bugs too, right? There's, oh, how many bugs are there? 100 and, I actually went and looked. 100 and something bugs that are open right now on exec SG. Ooh, yeah. That includes all those pieces though, right? So some of them are just prints out the wrong thing. Yeah, those are pretty easy. <laughs> Some of them are crashes on my weird hardware. Like, uh oh, that could be tough, right? <laughs> yeah. And then we have these new products coming in too, right? Because we've got the H1222 we want to get out the door. So. We do? Well, we do now. <laughs> <laughs> we want to get it out the door. <coughs> so, how are we going to organize the backlog now to fix bugs and get that out the door, right? Oh, so you, that's what Scrum helps with. It helps you figure out what you're doing. <laughs> and then the whole team knows what you're doing. So it's Hyperion will know what we're doing. We'll know what we're doing. 
There's no ambiguity. So that's my goal. Anyway, that's that's why I wanted to borrow from Scrum. I don't know anybody. Has anyone here done Scrum before? Yes. Hate. Love. It usually well, hate or love. See if I love. It. No, I think you hated it. I hate it. I he loved it. Oh, you guys are software. <laughs> you guys are software people. Oh, Things yeah. don't explode. You don't have. Did they make you do it on hardware? You don't have. Yes. That's just me. It's stupid. It doesn't apply everywhere. <laughs> Our current rights channel for thinking things it does. They, thank you, Kenny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know it does not apply everywhere, and it's difficult to apply. And um, I find it very difficult. In distributed database scenarios. <laughs> well, anyway, there, there's certain things that, eh, right? So, and it also depends on your, your scrum master and your product owner and how much your corporation bought into the idea. Because if you're funding guys, <coughs> you believe in this? That's the thing. You're dead. That's it, yeah. You yeah. gotta do it. What do you mean you did that first? Yeah. I paid for this. Doesn't matter. You talk to the product owner. It's like, well, I don't talk to the product owner. I put the money in, and boom, right? <laughs> so that, that's uh, it's, it's difficult to implement, isn't it? You know, that's why you end up paying these high-priced Scrum coaches. <laughs> There's lots of them. Come into your company and help you out. So you had good luck with it. Yeah. 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 Same. Okay. Uh, as a main developer, uh, we, we always knew what we were doing and who we were doing it together and uh, when we wanted to do what and so on. And uh, of course it depends on the really good scrum master and the really good feel, common feel of how the process mm -hmm. should run. So, but uh, in our company we had, uh, it was uh, introduced globally and uh, roll out with with uh, intensive courses for everybody. So uh, <coughs> so with a switchover yes. from the old days to this. Yeah. Wow, that's expensive. Uh, yes, <laughs> I think they uh, actually uh, turned out the profit on. I'm I'm not sure about the numbers, but, but yeah, it seemed a success. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in the end, it's it's to build products people want. Mm. Right. I assume they were building something something <coughs> local wanted. Mm. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's the important part. <laughs> and not but wasting it, money. It, right? uh, also um, uh, contains the concept of uh, it's the developers that do the estimates and they do it yes. in a group together with uh, you know the card game and so on. Uh, Fibonacci uh, series thing uh, you mean for the estimates? Do you think Fibonacci? Um, no. No. Uh, well, yeah, maybe. Usually, are you? I, I just never realized that. When you do points. Yeah, story points. Yeah. 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 You like that, eh? Yeah, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> really, really matches reality too. Great idea. <laughs> There's, There's always some it. that don't like. Yeah. <laughs> All of us. That's good to have both <laughs> voices. And that's good. So describe what that is the game with the points. Oh, well, when you're doing estimates, you don't do time estimates, you mm -hmm. do effort estimates. Yeah. So you say, oh, it's going to be three points hard. Yeah. Oh, no, this is going to be 30 points hard. What's what the heck's the sequence? <laughs> but uh, and, and you use the, that sequence so that you can't have, oh, it's twice as much as this. Right? You have a nice separation, distribution of effort. It's just a trick. Right? You can use any sequence, any point system you want. When you're estimating yep. anything, but I mean, the thing that drives them nuts, though, is it doesn't translate into a deadline. Yep, the points. So it's really it hard and not take yes. a lot of time. And it's oh, it can be but you got to have sprint targets. Be very fast or long. Or targets. You yeah, the sprint, the sprint targets are not the same as the story part. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and when you finish a job, yeah. you also yeah. tell them how many yeah. points it was. Because it depends how much your velocity yes. is. It's like, ah, people go insane sometimes. Yes. Yeah, that's a lot. 
pollute. It is. <laughs> no, no, it's yes, it is. Mean, seriously. Yeah. No, it so I was going to take that. Why is it correctly just just for yeah. the yeah. 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 number of hours that we just go from there. Because people can't estimate. You know enough of storing points you are able to accomplish with a spreadsheet. Within the box, yeah. It's just a simplification. It works in practice. It, it does. does. I mean, it's, it's all very similar to what we have to make costs as we go through. We break it down into a bunch of things. We see we're going to be needed for the job. Yeah. And then we attribute three yeah. different levels of hours on it. Yeah. yeah. Well, then it's hours. And then at the end of the job, you compare the hours to the what you estimate. Yeah. yeah. Is it's it whether or not you just another scheme. work for free? Yeah. It's another scheme. Yeah. You know, if you have a fixed point, uh, fixed cost contract or Time and effort, like whatever. Not to exceed contracts. Or not to exceed contracts. Yeah, so all these different schemes. In the end, really, you just want a product on time, on budget. How do you do it, right? So, this is another way. <laughs> and this seems to work well with software people because they can't estimate. Um, actually, I was in a, in a company that tried the complete opposite, which is to use metric driven estimates, so people weren't allowed to estimate. No people allowed to estimate. You can't go talk to your architect and say, how many days will this take? Not even allowed to talk about it. No, he has to talk about complexity. And then we pump it into the tool, and the tool spits out a number, and that's the number. We tried that for a while. It, it works. It's, it's a guy-go system. So <laughs> If you don't feed it good data from your company, you're gonna get crap estimates out. So it, it, it kind of worked because it removed all the emotion. But on the other hand, it, it, it only worked as, as good as the data that was going into it. So it was very expensive tools. <laughs> all sorts of statistics. You know, so I've, I've seen both now. Scrum is kind of the complete opposite and then you got the metric driven guys, and then you got everything in between. So. <laughs> For how to deliver, right? Yeah. I just try to focus on the ultimate goal, which is, is, is this part. <laughs> deliver what people want and what's valuable, you know, basically. Yeah, but people don't know what they want. They, they think they want a cheap Amiga. But yeah. They, well, that's they don't really want cheap. They just want less money, but they yeah. want high high end and high this and high yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. It's always you get this uh, oh. weird bipolar bipolar thing going on. It's strange. Because <laughs> I, I I've seen uh, products that come out that are extremely expensive, hardly do anything, and people just want them. Why? Does it explain why software today in general is so utterly Oh, well, that, no, no, no. Sure. There, that's another sure. seminar. Oh, yeah, okay. I'll bring my, uh, my friend Ken in here. <laughs> He'll tell you. <laughs> He's a project manager <laughs> for a consulting firm. Um, anyway, oh, yes, what else do you need want to know? So that was, that was it. That, that's all I have. See, so my backlog, I started one on the wiki, as uh, I've sent out to all of our team members. It's private right now. I can show it to you later. <laughs> so not on camera, I think. <laughs> and um, we're going to try this and see what happens. <coughs> right? Awesome. We're going to try it. Well, we're not using all of Scrum. We're not doing time boxes yet. Because that's just too much for people to, I don't think we'll ever use it. I don't know. Because these guys are kind of come and go. They're not a cohesive team. You know, it's like, it doesn't quite like work. At some point. They're human. <laughs> yeah. At some point, um, I, I'm very, very interested in the new logging object, number one. That's, that the looks logging very, framework, yeah. yeah. that looks very interesting. The multi-core support thing that we've been talking about for a while, at some point, you're going to have to kind of tell us yeah. how to manage threads. Yes. And, you know, how we're going to, because I imagine also that a lot of things are going to be different. We can't assume in the future that storage is going to be at a particular location, like we have in the past. Unless there's some really, really amazing memory system that you guys have invented that nobody else has. So I'm okay. very, very curious about this. Because once you have multiple threads and cores and caches, things don't exist in the same 
place all the time, and yeah. there's a lot of education that's going to have to take place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been reading up on that again. Yeah, I mean, at, the, yeah. at what point are we going to start seeing some documentation? Has this been architected yet, or is this still kind of brainstorming? No, it's yeah. not. Well, over. okay. What, brainstorming? Architected. <laughs> I can't say it is. <laughs> Says the architect. It's a noun. If I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I use it as a verb because it drives me mad. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I mean, actually, I Thomas watch. wrote uh, 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 an article on how to do multi-core a long, long time ago. It's, on, it's on our wiki. Okay. Yeah, and I have it there, and I have a bunch of other stuff that he <coughs> he, he went through the thought process. Right. But I think it looked like a first pass, second pass, and it needs like five more passes. Right. You know, it's getting there. I mean, like, cause how much cash flushing do we have to do manually? Like, mm -hmm. we're going to change the semaphores. I mean, there's, yeah. are we going to start making use of reservation ops? There's like a ton of stuff that people are going to have to kind of know. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and then, you know, I'm reading about these um, uh, Erlang type systems yeah. where there are no mutexes. You know, there's no such thing. Or, or like, um, well, how do you know that the data is up to date? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a, it's a higher level primitive. Oh, so it doesn't you solve. don't you don't even know what a mutex is. It just happens. It's okay. Yeah. It's like so not reduced. It, right? it knows. It knows. <laughs> what it happens to deal with the conflict. Yeah. Well, underneath it fuses it, but programmers aren't allowed to touch it. Well, how does it know the difference between when yeah. the thread is accessing data based on oh. the user? Oh, yeah. You don't have to. How do you how do you how do you how do you how do you, how do you ensure? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, atomic storing and yeah, so you don't have shared memory either. There's no shared memory. Everything message passes. Okay, well that makes more sense. Though. That's how you do it. Okay. And then you put a, a state machine on each process or thread. Okay. And that's all it does. It's like a reactor. You know, reactor pattern. No. It just reacts to messages. Message okay. comes in, do something. There's not like a, a massive amount of overhead as a result. Yeah, there is. There is. Okay. But. But for then, us, we don't care. So that's <laughs> but, where the assembly coding. But if you're doing in. a bank system, yeah, you care. But you know, so it applies to it simplifies a massive amount of problems okay. with uh, hobbyist programmers. Put it that way. Okay. Yeah. All right, but it sounds like you guys are still way early in high level design here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now there's some implementation stuff done too, because I know he did pluggable schedule or something or other in there, okay. and and. Uh, <laughs> There was some interrupt, we were talking about the interrupt controller. We did something there, but I, we have to bring it all back together, right? Yeah. Remember the X kernel? Yep. I, no, I don't. I was, yeah. that was before my time. The X kernel? Yeah, it was. Mulder was involved. The truth about that. Only the shadow knows. <laughs> anyway, I'm, we're all very curious, and I'm sure that trolls are very curious as well. So. <laughs> yeah, the trolls are always curious. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go salivate over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I bring up the reactor and the Erlang and things because uh, that seems like a much, much better way to get stuff done quickly versus the old P threads, mutexes, semaphores, signaling. But you have to completely change your mind, right? You have to flip it to do it the Erlang way, which no one does. <laughs> or uh, what's the other language? Go, I think, has what they call conduits. This, these are all very high level. Google Go? High level. Yeah. Oh, maybe you're not Pascal familiar. Pascal okay. and Erlang yeah. and, and, and Go. Yeah, okay. right? I've, I've never used it. Interesting, before we break for lunch, I can tell you just a little story. I, uh, I got to see a presentation by uh, Jaren Stustro. Um, Last week, in Calgary, showed up. It's like, oh, I gotta go to that. So got to see the inventor of C++, right? Yes. Yeah, and um, he was talking all about uh, where they're gonna take C++ in, in threading. And he's a big, big fan of conduits from Go and things like that. Like, they, we already have futures and things like that that try to hide the weird complexities of multi-threading. But um, he definitely wants to move the language so that it's guys like us can program multi-threaded stuff without getting it wrong is the goal, right? Because <laughs> it's so easy to get wrong. <laughs> and
and, uh, and he's very into that right now. He wants to get it into the 2023 standard. It didn't make it for 2020. We missed it. Yeah. C++ 2020 won't have it in there. But 2023 looks like it's going to have something. Okay. In there for uh, for multi-threaded programming. Okay. But it's going to be another one of those generation gap things. Up to it. I'm used to mutexes and semaphores and critical sections. So you take all that away. Here. <laughs> Except in the drivers, I've had to anyway. <laughs> yeah. the, I was thinking about that in the context of Amigo S. Because I'm like, wow, maybe we could just skip this whole mutex mumbo jumbo, put an API on there that's compatible with, uh, with conduits. But then, how do you port software? <laughs> it's like, because your, your 10 Fort Foxes and the things they use the old way. So, yeah, I mean. <laughs> It'll be interesting. I've done a bit of uh, Angular programming with JavaScript, well, actually, TypeScript and AngularJS. Oh. Uh, it sounds a little like it's similar to promises in Angular. Ah, promises, yeah, yeah a future yeah. promise. Yeah. Same kind of idea. Yeah, it's, it's a different way of coding. Yeah, it's <laughs> totally different. Yeah. <laughs> so, quite a while, let's get my head around mm -hmm. that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it's very, it's, it's a nice way to abstract that mutex stuff away because we're very bad at it, humans in general. <laughs> so, well, maybe not all. <laughs> software written for 32-bit machines uh, in Windows for example and then then you had 64-bit versions uh, which could use the uh, the, the multi-core process um, but you could still buy 32-bit versions and they would still run like Photoshop for example are we talking about something like that yeah okay. yeah for the for the multi-core yeah actually you have to do 30 64-bit support too we have to Another, uh, that's another presentation. <laughs> that's kind of this. <laughs> yeah, this week. Oh yeah. yeah. I've got lots of crazy ideas now. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that, that's kind of my exec SG introduction. Now, um, I, was, I was going to present something similar on Saturday. But maybe not with everything like this in it. Might ask for your help in dumbing it down, so to speak. I'm not sure that I thought that probably Is it too much? Too no. little? No. no. There's not much. There's not much detail here. 
No, I was on purpose so I could talk. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to talk the detail if I had it. Yeah, I think slide deck's fine in this. I'm just using this to remind me what to talk about. You know, trying to do that technique. I, I would suggest dropping this last slide. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think it worked better when I asked as we went along. Yeah, instead of holding till the end. I don't know. Because no, because I could run out of time. You, the, the, the user question on Saturday will be, well, when are you going to release this? Or when yeah. are you going to get so to next month by that? <laughs> you yeah. might actually want to just pull it through. Because if you don't, it would be a, how many hours have we been here now? Yeah. Two hours? Of, yeah. If you have two hours on Saturday? Yeah, that's, no. no. Yeah, you may, I should hold until the end and do some Q&A, five, ten minutes. Not, good idea. <laughs> I think the order is a little wrong. I might put that diagram before. Yeah, it was the picture. It was useful. Maybe push so, that ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe just to give them the overview. Here's what it is. Yeah. It's this section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that would be more useful. Because I know when Jerry asked the question, oh, I should have put that up there. You're <laughs> welcome. Yeah, no, that's good. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, let's have lunch. Okay. Oh, could, what's, tell us about this walking device. Oh, well, it's just a debug logging. I right. shouldn't say just. It's very important. Right. How's, how's it going to work, and how do you get oh, the log out of your uh, G-Slog? It's like Syslog and Unix. Okay. Are you familiar? When you're, no. Or Windows Event Log Manager. So when your machine's logged off, and thing. you have to hit the power switch, how do you get the log? Or you, you can categorize things, you can prioritize. You can, you can dump it in a couple of places. So yeah. But Tom's didn't really give us a whole lot of detail. Because like I asked about it when, it, it, uh, when you got to the person yeah, yeah. I was like, well, this looks awesome. Yeah. He was like, well, don't get too excited. It's not, we're not all there yet. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. You have an answer. How do you get to it when your machine locked up and it didn't power switch? Oh, well, you're stuck there. Yeah. You have to go external. So you're back to the serial yeah. device and print yeah. Yeah, it doesn't help with that. It helps with organization of the messages. It's, it won't that help you much. Is that different from the No idea. <laughs> and the result is a, it, there's persistence. Yeah. Whereas now there isn't. Yeah, we right. can throw some persistence back in there. Yeah. And you have to put core number and things like that on it, right? Because mm -hmm. timestamps, yeah. right? Why are there no timestamps? Well, anyway, you know, sure. stuff like that. <laughs> Will there be identification as to what component made the comment? You know, there is that. Be there is. Yeah, if, well, you get, if you set the debug level high enough, it'll tell you what's pretty yeah. out. Yeah, but it's not automatically added for. No. You know, blah, blah, blah. Oh, but then you can filter it's, by just seeing what you're wanting to see. But pretty much everybody, I think all of us have written, have written a logging framework for Amigo S if you've worked on it for any length of time. I have one where I put the task slash process name in there, 